The title of my talk is Space Exploration in the Heart of Earth. That may lead us to think of science of Earth and space and how studying the depths of the oceans may help us better understand the nature of life in planets and moons far away from us that have oceans in them. It may even lead us to science Focusing, uh, it may lead us to science focusing at atmospheres across our solar system to help us better understand how Earth fits in within its larger environment and what the scenarios are for the evolution of other planets. Better yet, space science is on a search to find the exoplanets that resemble our Earth to explain, amongst other things, the existence of, li of life elsewhere. What it all drills down to is life. Science is the understanding of life. It is what everything is made of. And it is what we use to explain the inexplicable. Why would the UAE look at space? Why do we have a Mars mission? Why did we build spacecrafts and satellites right here, um, right here in Dubai? What is the reasons for those large investments when we're talking in the scales of nations who have been in space for upwards of 50 years, that have the technologies established, we here in the UAE have been driving innovation for quite a number of years. We've been driving innovation globally by the demand that we have for advanced technologies, for advancing our government, for advancing our economy, for pushing the boundaries of what we need so that we can have better lives for people here in the country. Neil deGrasse Tyson spoke today and quite eloquently about the drivers of technological advancement. And what resounds to me in that talk is that space exploration was driven by the need for dominance. Not exploration, but dominance. It was driven by war. War is ugly, and we all know that. But the, ta the takeaway here is that the drive for advancement is a need to, leave th is, is a need to not leave things to chance. It's to drive change from a position of power, from a position of comfort, rather than being, being, being placed in a position to react. It is with this key takeaway that we need to drive change through science and technology advancements here in the UAE. And that is the exact answer to why space for the UAE. Space provided this country with the perfect environment to transform the roles of engineers from maintaining systems that were designed elsewhere for uses that are not 100% particular to the uses that we require today. Transforming the roles to engineers who are designing and developing systems, complex space systems working in the most harsh of environments. It is currently transforming our manufacturing industry because aerospace, on top of space itself, is important to this nation. We are a logistics hub after all. The Emirates Mars mission is our investment in science and scientists, our, and the scientists of our future. It is the very first opportunity for those who study physics and mathematics to have another career choice other than becoming um, teachers and professors at universities. We're opening doors for atmospheric scientists, climatologists, statisticians, amongst other fields. I myself and a lot of my colleagues that are sitting here today amongst us are part of that investment in the intellectual capital of space that is driving the intellectual capital of our nation. I would like to point in the audience, and I know you might not like that, but I'll call your names and please stand who are shaping change in our nation today by using space to develop scientists and engineers. The best part, of course, as a byproduct of that, they're developing some cool missions that are going to outer space and exploring other planets and also getting valuable data on the site that we are share with everyone in the world so that we can have more discovery. I'd like to start with somebody who has been pushing the boundaries of inspiring young people when it comes to space. Amal Amin. <laughs> Amal started off as a computer engineer at the Mohammed Rashid Space Center. She is now designing for what I see is the most important factor of 
uh, of our mission to Mars. She is designing our outreach programs and our workshops that students of all ages can take to better understand science. And the impact of that resounds in every single place that we're there. Ali Al Mansour, who's sitting over there, is a product of one of our programs. Aisha Sharafi, I know you're going to hide if you're here. There you are. Aisha is the UAE's very first propulsion engineer that came out of a drive of going to Mars. And she will hopefully get us with the integrated propulsion into our, into our structure that was safely tested and everything's working well to the red planet. Now it's time for the rest of the subsystems to deliver on their part. Saeed Al Gargawi. From this platform here today and from other platforms, he continuously works on spreading the voice of science to the community of the UAE and providing everybody with the tangible outcomes of what science can bring, both in the long term and in the short term. Maria Mishamsi. Maria Mishansi is amongst one of the engineers that actually made a large career choice, and that's to transform from engineers to researchers in science. And for you who think that the two are the same, completely different, completely different mindsets, completely different approaches to solving the problem and discovering. Maryam is currently the director of space science at Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center. Imran Sharaf, who gave me that look. That, he is employee number one in the UAE space program. He has driven change in electronics engineering and currently spearheads the Hope Mars mission as the project manager. So that's my boss in the Emirates Mars mission. <laughs> Yusuf Shahi, I know I saw you a while back. I'm going. Yusuf Shahi? Not here. Yusuf Shahi has been the most transformative person out of everybody that, I, that I've met. I started working with him um, in the advanced aerial program, and he is now working on the assembly and integration um, of the Emirates Mars mission. <laughs> Investment in our intellectual capital, using science and technology to find solutions to our challenges and to drive our economy is the essence of our science strategy. Along with science for discovery, because we, because we speak of the future, we need to invest in science and technology and to become shapers of this key sector of the present and the future. And by shapers, I mean shapers of this sector globally and not only with local implement, implementation. Science and technology will become the fabric of our existence as human beings moving forward. And it does require patience and an appetite for risk and an understanding of the benefits of failure to success. Thank you. <laughs>